Today, I wanna to share 50 game-changing YouTube tips to help you grow your gaming channel. And let's see if I can do it all in less than 10 minutes. My name's Marcus Jones. Let's get stuck into it. You should pick one specific font to use across all of your thumbnails and videos. This is a super basic and easy way to make all of your content feel interconnected and to start building a recognizable brand. You can use Google fonts to find one that is high quality and free. On the topic of fonts, pick a font that is one, bold, and two, condensed. A bold font is gonna stand out and be easier to read in your videos and thumbnails. And a condensed font is gonna allow you to fit more words into a space. When creating thumbnails, there should be one specific place for your prospective viewer's eyes to rest. Don't make your potential viewers play a Where's Waldo game with your thumbnails. Usually, you want to avoid having more than two people primarily focused in your thumbnail. Not all click-through rates are created equal. Some videos get more views from search, some videos get more views from recommended and next up, and some get more views from browse. And these three very different locations tend to have different click-through rates. So to see your true click-through rates, go to your analytics, go to the advanced section, and then go to the traffic sources and you'll see the breakdown in there. When writing your video titles, make sure the important information doesn't get truncated. If your title is longer than 45 characters, usually anything beyond the 45 characters can be cut off for a bunch of mobile viewers. Your title and thumbnail should complement one another. It's usually a wasted opportunity to have the exact same text in your title as you do your thumbnail. Most of you should not post daily videos. Unless your content is very low effort, from a practical perspective, posting quality content daily is gonna burn you out fast. Better to post one to three times per week consistently over the long term. Supply and demand is critical on YouTube. A whole video could be made on this, but avoid creating videos on topics or games that have a very small amount of people interested in them, AKA low demand. At the same time, avoid creating videos on topics or games that have a huge amount of demand and huge amount of supply. If we were to visualize this as a spectrum, I'd say you usually wanna find a niche somewhere around here where there's a decent amount of demand, but not an overwhelming amount of supply. And then you can expand as you grow. Don't be afraid to mimic your favorite creators when you're starting out. If you have a very specific idea for who you want to be and the type of content you want to create, then go for it. That's great. But if, like most people, you're still finding your voice and figuring out who you want to be online, then simply model the people you like. Or take multiple people and model different aspects of them that you like. And this might seem inauthentic, but what you'll find is through doing this, your own uniqueness and personality quirks will come to life. You should look at your analytics through a very skeptical lens when you're first starting out. And that's because of our next point, which is statistical significance is key. If you don't have a large amount of data coming through, then it's impossible to know whether the data you're seeing is accurate or whether it was just due to chance. Therefore, as a bare minimum, if the stat you're looking at doesn't have at least 100 hits, sometimes it's almost completely useless. Be very careful how seriously you take it. A great way to improve your content without using analytics is the taste talent gap. When we watch a video, most of us get a feel pretty quickly as to whether it's a good video or a bad video. So you should come back to your videos two to three weeks after you create them, watch them and pay attention to how you feel about them. And when you encounter things you don't like, make sure to remove them from future videos. Hillier Smith, Logan Paul's editor, explains it like this. Looking at analytics to a degree is an internal reflection. You're looking at yourself and where you went wrong and you're giving yourself the data to tell yourself where you went wrong. With Logan and me, we learned that the best way to improve is to look at yourself emotionally. And so we go, hey, we emotionally felt this wasn't as entertaining here. Where did we go wrong? How could we have told this better? You should use tools and plugins to save time and make the most out of your YouTube channel. Despite their vague website headlines and army of affiliates, popular YouTube growth software like vidIQ or TubeBuddy won't directly grow your channel. Yes, I use this software to get data insights and save time, but at the end of the day, these are tools, not crutches, and not being able to afford them will not make or break your channel. You don't need a huge amount of subscribers to make a decent living if you have a good business plan. I know a creator who had 10,000 subscribers and was making $60,000 US per year. We'll talk more about money making tips later in this video. A lot of small creators actually shouldn't bother trying to define their target audience. Many YouTube educators will tell you that you need to know the age, gender, relationship status, location of your target audience so you can build a customer avatar or target persona. And this is a practice that's very common and popular in business. However, if you're creating the types of videos that you would want to watch and you are your target audience, the whole customer avatar thing can 
just be a confusing waste of your time. Just use the taste talent gap, which we talked about earlier. It's a pretty good practice that can help you get better at commentating in your videos and being more interesting. LJ from Stream Scheme explains it very well here. Every single day, get a phone, get a camera, open up your webcam, it doesn't matter what. Hit record, film yourself for 10 minutes, talking and trying to be as entertaining as possible. End the 10 minute recording, don't watch it. Go away, don't think about it. The next day, sit down, watch your entire 10 minutes without speeding it up, without looking away, close everything else. Just focus on watching it you'll very quickly realize what you need to improve. Sub for sub actually does work if you just want to increase your subscriber count. But to cut a long story short, it screws you up in the long run. So just don't do it. To so be very skeptical and careful about what and whose advice you take seriously. And interestingly, this also applies to people who have had success already on YouTube. Yes, if someone's got 10, 20, 30, or even 100,000 subscribers, their advice has a lot more weight than some random person in a Reddit community. But just because you're successful doesn't doesn't actually mean you know how you became successful. And I've actually heard some YouTubers who, by the numbers, are quite successful giving out factually incorrect information and advice that is just straight up wrong. And speaking of misinformation, there are no imaginary benchmarks on YouTube. I've heard people talking about 100 subscribers or 200 subscribers or 1,000 subscribers about how when you hit those numbers, YouTube starts taking your channel seriously. <laughs> it's all garbage. If you create an amazing video on 100 subscribers or 300 subscribers, YouTube will still basically treat it in exactly the same way. It's okay to not have some massive philanthropic reason for wanting to do YouTube. When I first started, I heard a lot of potentially PR altered mission statements from YouTubers claiming that they just wanted to change the world. And their entire existence was simply about entertaining others. And for some people, I'm sure that's true and good on them. But for others, it's just not. And that doesn't make you less of a person or less likely to succeed. What is important is that you figure out your reason for wanting to succeed, your why, because that's gonna help keep you going when times get tough. It's also okay to have multiple whys. For example, you might want to make people laugh, but you also want to figure out how to make a side hustle income online. And those are two totally valid reasons for wanting to be a gaming YouTuber. And while these whys aren't huge world changing goals, that doesn't make them any less valid or powerful. Once you figure out your whys, it can be useful to chunk them down into achievable goals or steps that will help you reach them. And the reason this is powerful is Google defines motivation as a reason for behaving in a certain way. So if you have no reason for doing what you're doing, then it's very likely that your motivation will wane very quickly. Your rational side will say, why the hell am I doing all of this anyway? And when it comes up blank, you'll quit. Motivation is nice, but rely on discipline. For most of the successful YouTubers I know, I'd say their success could be attributed to about 20% motivation, 80% discipline. And that's because YouTube is actually really hard. I still believe that it's not too late to start. It is harder now that there's so much supply out there, but it's definitely not impossible. And for those who do crack the code, the rewards are now greater, but it's still hard nonetheless. In fact, even though I'm sure you know succeeding on YouTube is hard, I'd be willing to bet that achieving success on YouTube is actually a lot harder than you probably think it is right now. So if this is the road you wanna take, be prepared. But if this isn't the road you wanna take, there's nothing wrong with quitting YouTube. Like seriously, you're not a bad person for trying YouTube, but then discovering you actually don't wanna be a YouTuber as much as you thought you would. The best way to cultivate your audience off YouTube is actually not social media. It's an email list. So if you want to back up in case your channel ever disappears or you want to engage with your community on an even deeper level, don't start an Instagram account. Start a newsletter. Being a gaming YouTuber actually involves far less gaming than you probably think. In fact, most of the successful YouTubers I know spend the majority of their time brainstorming, scripting, creating, managing, and editing videos in their channel than they do playing video games. You should film for the edit. If you mess up your words or say something stupid, just repeat what you just said. Or if you struggle to speak extemporaneously, like me, just record your videos sentence by sentence. Then in the edit, just cut out the bits you don't want and you'll be left sounding like a master content creator. I found it usually takes a lot of small decisions to complete even the easiest of tasks. So even though it might sound easy to create and manage social media around your YouTube channel or to make that extra video or to make that extra short. So if you're doing something just for the sake of it because it can't hurt and seems easy, most of the time you should probably just stop doing it entirely. As a small creator, make sure your video 
ideas are not about you. For example, creating a video titled, I can't believe this happened to me is a mistake because in order for people to be interested in what happened to you, they need to care about you. And you're just one of literally millions of other gaming channels out there. So they probably won't click. Instead, create objectively interesting videos that people would want to click on regardless of whether or not you created them or someone else created them. Be careful promoting yourself. It can be easy to mess up your channel. For example, if you promote a Minecraft video in a general gaming group, and let's say three people from that group click on your promotion and go watch your video. But because it's a general gaming group, one of those viewers is primarily just interested in Call of Duty content. The other one is primarily just interested in Fortnite content. And the other one is primarily just interested in The Sims content. The problem with this is now you're confusing the YouTube algorithm as to what your video is actually about. The YouTube algorithm will look at the people who are viewing your video and look at their past watch histories to help get an idea of who it should promote your video to in the future. And so when the algorithm goes and promotes your Minecraft video to Call of Duty players and then Fortnite players and then The Sims players, because of those three views you just got through promotion, those people it's promoting to probably won't click on your content, which is gonna send the algorithm negative signals and stop it from promoting your content in the future. Don't buy real followers online. Most of them are only real in the sense that they come from a click farm. So a real person clicked on your subscribe button, but there's no way in hell they're actually interested in your videos or will engage with them. YouTube actually doesn't get that much more enjoyable as you grow. It sounds cliche, but aside from the initial spike and high of getting lots of views and comments and likes on your videos, eventually our minds get used to that level of engagement. And then all you're left with is creating the same content you're creating for, but just for a slightly larger amount of people. So even if you have zero subscribers right now, you need to enjoy the type of content that you're creating because getting thousands or even tens or hundreds of thousands of views and subscribers won't make you enjoy it more in the long run. And I can say this from personal experience and also the experience of other successful YouTubers I've worked with, some of whom have over a million subscribers. It's true that anybody can make a career on YouTube, but maybe not everybody can make a career on YouTube creating the type of content they expect they want to create. A very harsh and potentially extreme example of this is if you have a severe speech impediment that makes it very difficult for people to understand what you're saying, then regardless of what you do, you're probably never going to become a successful commentary YouTuber. It sounds harsh, but it's just the reality of the situation. However, that doesn't mean you can't succeed on YouTube doing something else that doesn't rely so heavily on your weaknesses. So anybody can make a career on YouTube, but you need to be smart and be creating a type of content that plays to your strengths. The pinned comment section on your videos and in your YouTube shorts is an incredibly underutilized piece of real estate. So many people check the comment sections of videos they're watching, far more than check the video description. So if you've got essential information you need to communicate to people beyond what's in your video, put it in your pinned comment. YouTube shorts and long form videos at this moment are completely disconnected. In other words, the performance of your short or long form videos will have no impact on one another, which for some can be seen as a negative thing, but it can also be a very positive thing because it gives you more freedom to experiment without messing up the other type of content you create. You do not need to show your face to be successful, especially as a gaming YouTuber. There are also plenty of types of content in which you don't need to reveal your voice if you wanna be a successful YouTuber. There's no standard or shortcut that will make you grow faster. Just do what you think will best suit your content. Be careful focusing too much on keywords. The majority of fast growing YouTubers actually get their traffic through the next up recommended sections and the YouTube homepages. And on those places, what's more important is getting your viewers to click on your video when they see your thumbnail and title. So in most circumstances, you should optimize your videos for humans, not robots. Stay true to your vision, but be open to how it plays out. You may have a specific goal on YouTube that you really want to achieve, but sometimes the path you're currently on doesn't lead to that goal. That doesn't mean that goal isn't attainable for you. It just means you need to find a different, easier path to reaching that goal. If you're in a competitive niche, ask yourself, why would someone become a loyal viewer of your channel over all of the other channels? What X factors do you have? It sounds simple, but if you struggle to come up with clear, compelling reasons, you might have just figured out why you find it so difficult to get people to stick around your channel. Because remember, your viewers are humans too. I know it can be easy to get caught up in the numbers of analytics, subscribers, views, impressions, but all those numbers represent humans just like you or me. And so while numbers are important, it's also important to go above and beyond to satisfy the human element. For example, Jimmy talks about that here. 
When you go the extra mile, viewers just really notice, like anything, you know, they just can tell and it'll make them more inclined to click on videos in the future when they feel like you put a lot of effort into your videos. When you're a small channel, don't worry about paying too much attention to branding. Branding can be important, but at the start of your journey, don't waste hundreds of dollars and tens of hours trying to come up with the perfect logo, channel banner, and lower thirds. Most of the time, your audience don't care that much and that time will be far better invested making your content itself much better. Bonus round. In my opinion, the fastest way to reach your first 1,000 subscribers is by joining my four-digit challenge. It's a 90-day step-by-step guide where each day you'll get a very specific set of tasks to complete and by the end of the challenge, if you complete all the tasks, you'll have yourself 1,000 loyal subscribers or you get your money back. It also includes cool things like access to a private Discord server full of other like-minded individuals and live calls with me every two weeks. And so so far, my students have been getting some incredible results. So if you'd like to learn more, I'll leave a link in the description. Most small YouTube channels don't starve, they drown. In other words, they don't fail because of a lack of information. They fail because of an overwhelming amount of information, which results in them focusing on the wrong things. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. But if you want to learn how to prioritize the right things, click on this video because it will show you my nine-step process that helped my first gaming channel get over 25 million views.